In this video, you're gonna witness the most delicious, it's literally heartwarming, most unique, look at this, strangely satisfying noodles in Vietnam's capital, Hanoi. Calvin, can you just grab a nice handful? Sure. <laughs> 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 but first, let's back up. In this series, we're taking on the ultimate Vietnamese noodle tour from the north. Guys, have you ever just seen one giant flat noodle like this? To the central region. We're in a tiny, very local noodle factory, where they're one of the only places still making this noodle the old-fashioned way. All the way to the south deep into the Mekong Delta. Oh, I see it, dude. There's a steaming pot of broth on her boat. Hi, Sin Chow. Uh, Calvin, please translate. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're taking on the familiar with a little bit of a twist. I've never had this in Vietnam. What would you call this? So... All the way to the creepiest bowl of noodles in town. Going from these live creatures to something you can eat on some noodles. That's wild. One, it all starts here. The noodle tour has officially begun. We're starting right here in Hanoi, and I am in the kitchen ready for a noodle eat breakfast. <laughs> The pho most people are most familiar with internationally would be beef pho. But actually here in Hanoi, chicken pho is super popular. This place specializes in all things chicken pho. The amount of ingredients you can get here are insane. Unlaid chicken eggs, chicken butt, chicken pancreas. But before any of that, you have to start with the banh pho. That process is actually starting right now beside me. Steamed rice noodle sheets, the foundation of every pho dish. Made from rice flour, cornstarch, water, salt, and rendered chicken fat. Apply the batter to a steamer for a few minutes, and you get this. Okay, here we go, the big moment. So she uses a wooden rod to slowly peel that layer of banh pho off, and then she's gonna hang it up on the drying rack. Uh-oh, there's not a hole in there. Oh, 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 after this cools down, they're gonna bring it to a different station and cut it into those beautiful pho noodles that we're all so familiar with. Let's go. I want to complete a childhood dream. I've always wanted to just put one of these in my mouth. This is a banh pho that's already cooled down. Do you see how it's not afraid of a man's touch? That went a lot differently in my mind. It's very pillowy, almost squishy and soft. Could use a little bit of broth. Assemble the noodles, spring onion, herbs, and chicken meat. Then level it up with a clump of boiled unlaid eggs, chicken pancreas, fatty chicken butt, and this. Did you know you could eat that? Finally, top with more veggies, and to tie it all together, a delicate, heartwarming broth. Mmm. Oh, it's literally heartwarming. It's like if your parents give you a hug. I imagine, I've read about it in books. Because they never actually gave you a hug, did they? Yeah. One time. Uh, they thought I was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me on this cross-country noodle tour, my good friend, Calvin Bowie. Noodles are something that I grew up with. It's probably my favorite dish to eat in the whole entire world. I love the texture. I love the variety. I love the versatility. This is one of my favorite, kind of unknown, but still underrated ingredients in the world. Like this would have become an egg if you gave the chicken a little bit more time to poop it out. And yes, I mean poop it out. Do you guys know where the eggs come from on the chicken? There's not a separate egg hole. Let that sink in. Oh. <laughs> It's so creamy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more creamy than any chicken egg that's boiled. The texture is very much like if you mix the egg white and the egg yolk together. It made a little omelet, but that was still in a spherical shape. Mm. Delicious. I'm told this is a pancreas. Pancreas bone. It's very livery in taste mm. and texture. Also very lemongrassy and fatty kind of dark meat. Oh. Um, having that fresh noodle appeal truly is making this bowl a 10 out of 10. When I tried it earlier, it had really almost no flavor to it. It was just about texture. Obviously, all the flavor here is coming from the broth. It gets soaked into the noodle. I mean, look at how thick these are. It's like a scroll. Do you want to write a, a story on there? Yes. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I've never had this in Vietnam. What would you call this? This is from a rooster. It's the back part of their mohawk. It's the coxcomb. The co you yeah. can see that, you can. I said cod cub one time, you got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite word, mm. gelatinous. Has a little gamey flavor. Yeah, it's fatty, although mine was infused with lemongrass too. It is a different type of texture, and I think that's the point of all these meats as you move through the bowl, is to get different tastes and textures of this piece and that piece. Right here, we have chicken butt. Oh God, you're oh. bar. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love chicken butt, and I used to be afraid because it was, you know, had the word butt in it, but I've learned to love butts. And I cannot lie. That's right. 
this next noodle is a beloved staple of Hanoi. Even though its main source of protein may be a major turnoff for some, I'm here to find out if this is an acquired taste or love at first bite. Look at this. Stunning. Me or the snail? Both. But one of them looks slimy. I will not say which one. Dozens of different snail species are eaten throughout Vietnam, from freshwater to oceanic, from very, very small wow, look at that. to shockingly huge. This thing is a monster. Here at this family-owned restaurant, they've been serving freshwater snails with noodles for over 70 years. Why do people love the snails so much? Ốc này nhiều canxi. Full of calcium. <laughs> it's good for you and it's organic. How do you know when it's a good snail? I mean, I'm looking the snail in the eyeballs. They won't even make eye contact with me. Uh, in the morning at the market, she'll put the snails into a bucket and she'll submerge it with water. The ones that are alive will sit upright with the shell looking towards the sky. But the ones that are dead will go upside down and just show you their booty. If she's gonna buy a snail, it better be a snail that she can murder herself, correct? <laughs> <laughs> of course she doesn't. The snails are boiled, and hundreds of them are dug out of their shell one by one. I understand that when you make a beef stock or a chicken stock because they've got bones, but how do you do it with a snail? She boils the snail. She mixes that in with certain herbs and a special rice wine vinegar. Add in tomato, chili paste, and spring onions to create this earthy broth. Now, the assembly. First, add the noodles. Like pho, boon is also a rice-based noodle. Boon is such a legacy dish. It's come from our ancestors. It's something that you see in everyday life. It's an OG, O-N, original noodle. <laughs> Top with a batch of snails, spring onions, and heartwarming, steamy, tomatoey broth. Right here, we have our super steaming hot bowl of boon and out. The broth looks completely different from that chicken broth that we just had. This is clear, almost like a food that ah. a French term for a broth made of seafood. Somebody went to French cooking school. Where? How much did that cost, by the way? 45,000. Do you make that money back ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. It certainly doesn't have like the depth of bone broth, but it's still very savory. It is just very light and airy. We should try some of this boon. Oh, look at that. This is just the right moment. It soaked up just enough of the broth. Mm. Springy, and it's light. It's such a great vehicle for flavor. It's a good point. You see it mixed with just about every different creature they have in Vietnam, including the snail. <laughs> Look at this monster of a snail. <laughs> it looks like a leech almost. Earlier, I was watching her take these snails out and she just twirls them with the perfect technique to get all the meat and all the poop out of there. Mm -hmm. So, so special. Wow, that one was briny. Intense seafood flavor. Somehow it's meaty and crunchy at the same time. It's like a cartilage. Yeah. And there's very few things in life that have those two textures together. Absolutely. Oh man, I'm in love. I know like if you get a close-up of this snail, it's gonna look weird and bizarre and a little bit funky if you've never tried it before. It's like you have to try it and become acquainted with it. Then you start looking at it and you go, oh, I know you look kind of ugly, but boy, you taste good. Soon, we'll see how this slimy creature has crawled its way into one of this city's creepiest bowl of noodles. It's like the scene in Indiana Jones. But before that, this. A double dose of noodles for one seriously low price. It's called ban da cua. Ban da cua này ăn nó rất là ngon, nó thanh. Mà cái này nó cũng đầy đủ hết các cái chất như là chất sơ, canxi, đạm đỡ đầy đủ. Cho nên là mọi người rất thích cái món này. Tucked deep inside a local market, hidden away from the main streets, Miss Phum is serving up a recipe she inherited from her mother over 30 years ago. Mẹ chị dạy là nguyên liệu là mình phải mua đồ tươi, làm là phải sạch sẽ cẩn thận. Như thế thì khách người ta mới tìm đến với mình, nhất là trong chợ. In a bowl, add some poached veggies, then two types of rice noodles, a brown one and a white one. Top it with fish cakes, slices of beef tenderloin, crab paste, then a savory broth made by boiling pork bones and crab paste for hours and hours. I've never had this before. I've never even seen it. This is banda. Banda. It's like bandana ah, without all the extra syllables. Right, banda. Let's get the broth. Mm. Oh, those are the flavors that I love. Just that really seafood-esque flavor. Yeah, like if you steamed a crab and then you wrung it out like a towel, it would taste like that. That's how she did it. I think this one is really about getting a little bit of the vegetable, a little bit of the noodle, pieces of the tenderloin, the fish cake, and also a little bit of the crab patty. That oh is a God. great bite right here. Why uh -huh. aren't you there with me? I'm gonna eat this and then eat more. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Bro, mm. delicious. So what's interesting, the way this is made, there's no way to like have two different noodle experiences. As soon as you put your chopsticks down, they just start like combining together. And so it just mm. becomes one big clump of texture, completely flavored like crap. They're both made of rice powder, but the darker one, the coloring comes from caramelizing sugar. So you don't get much of the flavor. It's more of the aesthetic. Dude, can I say something really quick? No. Okay, <laughs> then let's go for it. <laughs> mm. But I've noticed in Vietnam, folks here don't always mind it. Kind of a soft, soggy noodle. Mm. For me, I really love an egg noodle because it's got a lot of texture and kind of bite to it. Sure. Noodle dishes are really about texture, right? And so the yeah. vegetables in there kind of play off that softness of the noodle. That's a lot of vegetable. I can see why some people would need that for fiber, digestion, Crohn's disease. <laughs> I don't know. What I love about noodles in Vietnam is the endless variety. There's just so much here. Noodles I've never seen before in my life. I gotta say, pretty good. I may have spoken too soon, because now I'll be faced with this, a type of noodle that isn't for the faint of heart, but there's no turning back now. Recently, I went to the USA and I went to many Vietnamese restaurants and see like 98 different Vietnamese foods, but they won't have this. Yay! Pounds and pounds of live eels. Why did she just cheer when it came out? I don't know. This swamp eel has made a 200 mile journey all the way here to Miss Dean's prep kitchen. Where'd you even get these eels? Oh, interesting. In the rice paddy, they put a bamboo pipe into the ground and the eel slides inside of the bamboo. Oh, that's wild. This eel is the foundation for her famous noodles. Noodles she's been selling for the last 36 years. Here's how it works. These smooth-skinned, slippery creatures are dumped in their final stainless steel resting place. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, what's that oh. like? It feels slimy. It's like the scene in Indiana Jones, when all the snakes are just slithering away through crevices and hands. If he rubs that on his face, is that good for his skin? <laughs> she adds in salt, the eel's only weakness. After a few minutes of writhing, the spirit of each eel ascends to the eel paradise in the sky. Meanwhile, on Earth, it's time to get cooking. The now de-signed eels hit the grill, roasting over charcoal until they cook through. So why eels? I really think that it's something that's just fun to eat. And because they have so many rice fields here in Vietnam, this was something that was readily available. Now, one by one, she splits them in half to remove their bones and organs. Shred the eel meat into smaller strips, dredge it in flour, then deep fry in hot oil until they're perfectly crispy. With our eel transformation complete, it's time to bring this all together. Blanched cellophane noodles and veggies are added to a bowl. What is cellophane? It's what you stuff into boxes. You could eat that? No, you can't. Oh. Cellophane noodles are made of arrowroot. It's a underground root and sushi found in the mountain. Add MSG, soy sauce, the fried eel, roasted peanuts, fried shallots, and cucumber. But no cucumber for me. On the side of our dry noodles, a rich pork bone broth. Time to dig in. Calvin, this is our fourth and final noodle of the day. We saw this just moments ago. It was so slippery, slimy. Uh, Sunny, now shake my hand. Oh, we have been friends for so long. This is too intimate. So we've gone from that to this right here. That is quite a process. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sniff. Ooh, smells That's good. Nutty aroma. Kind of like fried fish skin. Let's try it out. Oh. That's good. The transformation of the year, my gosh, is so different. It still tastes like fish. It has a little bit of earthiness to it. Mm. You know, because it's this mud. Can we get any more sound effects at the moment? <laughs> it's this earthy creature. It's in the mud. It's in the swamp. And so to maintain some of that essence, but then all the flavors she put on top of it have made it absolutely delicious. That is just a topping. Underneath, we have the cellophane noodle, also known as a what noodle, Calvin? A glass noodle, Sunny. And then you've got a sidecar of broth, so you can still wet your whistle. Wet your noodle. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. They're not super soft. They have a nice bouncy spring to them. Mm -hmm. It's super salty, savory. It really absorbs all that schwas, right? Do you know what sauce is in there? Soy sauce, shallow oil, and a little bit of magic powder. 
Ah, yes, we're gonna have an MSG heart attack later. <laughs> the other thing I love about this noodle is that it's not clumped together oh, at yeah. all. Look at that amazing separation. Every time you pick it up, they're completely separate from one another. This is a pretty ultimate bite right here. Some eel, some noodle. Let's do it. Yeah. Even with the eel, the star of the show still is that glass noodle. The eel is just creating a nice crunchy little crouton, adding texture to the noodle, but there's no real strong flavor to it. A little bit of a sip. Mm. Oh. The broth is real clean, refreshing, kind of herby. This is one of my favorite noodles today. Mm. This is what I mean by like realigning your taste buds. Before trying this, I thought I'm gonna take about two bites. It's gonna taste like a swamp. It's not gonna be good. Yeah. And it's stunning. I'm a new man, I'm born again, and I've been baptized in eel broth. Amen. Amen. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Welcome to the Best Ever Food Review Show. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Mine looks like art. Yours looks like a, mm. a refuse container. How are you so good at this? I'm Vietnamese. I'm a food expert. This dish really was a great way to end this episode. Why are you speaking in such a deep voice? <clears throat> Il causes puberty. <laughs> She's got everything very orderly. You can just see all of her ingredients she's working with. And so it's very appealing. When you take stall. one look at her stall back here, it's like, yes, you are the chosen one. I will have two. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Ma'am? Put her there. Such a pleasure to be here. Come to America, especially Texas, we all do that. And we might do one of these too. Mm -hmm. mm. Chicken and touchdown, soft, mm. but still a little bit chewy. Very gritty in texture. Oh, Maybe yours is on a weird diet. Interesting, okay. So, in the morning, yes. did you get a phone call? No, I thought if I could hear the waves of the pond. This is one of my favorite noodles today. It's like the Jake Paul of noodles. It's an underdog. Mm. It's like you can't box and he's knocking out Tyron Tyron Woodley. Woodley. Ben Askren, Nate Robinson, the basketball player. You know each one. Yes. <laughs> Cellophane noodles can be eaten by everybody. Old people, young people, and middle-aged people like you and I. I'm not middle-aged yet. But I am. What are you, uh, Generation X? A late boomer. <laughs> <laughs> and a late bloomer. That was between you and I, dude. All right, I did not mean to bring that up. Boom! Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just the first one in a series of five covering the best, most unique, interesting noodles of Vietnam. I want to say a huge thank you to Calvin right here for joining me today, being in this video and sharing his Vietnamese food expertise. You can follow Calvin on FK and Deliciousness on the YouTube or on Instagram too. Ooh. Or both, why not? Why not? Be crazy. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A oh, peace! We have nowhere to walk off screen to, it's raining, mm -hmm. so. Where do you want to go? Do you have an umbrella? Or a multitude of umbrellas? We could use this and it'll turn into delicious noodles on the way. Shall we? Yes, let's go. <laughs> but not actually. <laughs>